Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and this week's video. In this one I'm really excited to be doing another acrylic painting, but instead of painting on a canvas, this time I'm going to be painting on a wooden panel, and I'll be talking to you more about that as we go through the video, so I hope you enjoy it. The subject of my painting today, as you've probably guessed from the thumbnail, is a cute koala, as I wanted to do something to help raise funds for all the good work that is being done to rescue and treat the animals hurt by the terrible forest fires out in Australia. So I'm going to be putting the original painting up in my Etsy shop and will donate 50% of the proceeds to the charity Wires. It'll be available internationally with free postage and packing. I'll list more information about this charity and how you can donate in the description box along with all the materials I used in this painting and the reference photo from Pixabay. So let's get on with this koala painting and why I chose to paint on wood. Well, I'm still pretty new to acrylics and have been really loving their vibrant colours and their potential to mix and blend really smoothly to create some lovely gradients. What I have struggled with though is painting on a canvas. The surface of a canvas is a lot rougher and more textured than I'm used to when painting in watercolour on paper. It's also quite bouncy to paint on unless you opt for a canvas board like this and the paint doesn't glide across it very easily. Even with the addition of more paint, a bit more water, and even mediums like Flow Improver, I still found it tricky. Now whilst I realise that it's going to take a lot more time and practice to master acrylics and painting on a different surface, it got me thinking, what if I could paint on something smoother? So after a bit of research, I discovered that wood could be a good alternative. It's smooth and firm, unlike canvas, and might make my acrylic painting experience a little easier. So this painting is going to be a bit of an experiment. I began by applying a few coats of white gesso to my panel. I did learn that with birch wood especially this isn't altogether necessary, but I did it because I didn't want the wood grain to show through on my finished painting. I applied two coats sanding in between with this cork sanding block, and brushed off any loose paint or dust with a soft brush. Then I painted another coat, this time of yellow ochre and mixed in a bit of white gesso, as I found that doing this helps achieve a smoother surface than just acrylic paint alone. It does lighten the colour a bit as you can see here, but for a base coat that's fine. The idea with this layer was to give me a mid-tone base colour to work on. That way, like when I used a grey tone paper for my charcoal and pastel drawings, I can better judge my lightest and darkest values and won't get distracted by the white of the canvas. With that all dry, it was time to mark out the outline sketch. For this, I used the grid method to draw out the koala onto tracing paper first, and then my white charcoal pencil on the reverse side to transfer the drawing onto the board. You can draw directly on the board itself, but this method ensures I have a neat, crisp outline to work with, without any mistakes or leaving eraser marks. And with all that prep work done, it was finally time to start on the actual painting. I painted the background first. For this I was going for a blurry, out of focus look and began by painting around the outside of the koala with a mixture of different greens. I used a flat angled brush for this and blended the different colours together on the board whilst the paint was still wet. This is a 12 by 12 inch board, so for the larger area of the background I decided to apply the paint with a sponge. I went for brighter greens at the top of the painting and darker greens and greys at the bottom. When the first layer was dry I added a second layer of paint and worked in some lighter areas to get a sort of a bokeh effect. Once that was dry I could then start painting the bright white fur on the koala's ear. I used a script liner or rigger brush for this and added just enough water to the paint to thin it out slightly and help it flow evenly across the wood surface. This bit was really fun and did seem easier to do on the wood surface compared to regular canvas. I also really like how this out of focus background contrasts with the more detailed foreground to really help it stand out. Once I'd filled in the bright white area I started to add some grey. First a very light grey, then gradually getting darker towards the top of the ear. 
I switch over to an angled flat brush for this and change up the grey just by mixing in more black or white paint as needed. I also add some burnt umber at the bottom of the face and blend it in whilst the paint is still wet to get a smooth transition. For the rest of the koala's face I work in sections, using the reference photo and my pencil guidelines to help me. This is only the first layer so I'm not too worried about leaving these white pencil marks at the moment as they'll get covered up later on. Being still quite new to acrylics, at this stage I'm focusing on blending my paints together on the wood surface and looking at the shape and form of the face. I'm not painting individual hairs at this early stage, more just mapping out, but it's always good to observe the length and direction of fur and how it curves and wraps around the face, as this is important to help make your portraits more realistic. I switch back to my rigger brush for the white detail around the koala's nose, and then it's back to the flat brush again to continue blocking out the grey fur on the top of the head. One thing I wasn't sure of with this piece was how to actually render this type of fur in acrylic paint. Koala's fur is quite thick and close up has an almost salt and pepper look to it with flecks of grey, white and black. This is a big wood panel so I didn't think it would look very realistic if I just painted it solid grey but equally it would take me forever to paint individual hairs. In the end I decided to start off by concentrating on the overall areas of dark and light fur and worry about getting the texture in with subsequent layers. So with the first layer on the face blocked out and with the painting looking pretty scary at this stage I move on to the darker fur in this ear, leaving a small section like I did on the other ear for some pink paint which I'll fill in later. I use long brush strokes to match the longer fur here and lay in white, light grey and dark grey to add variety and start to build up some depth. Then I use a much larger flat brush to apply a mid-tone grey to the koala's arms. I do the same on the other arm and try to work quite quickly here, as I want to blend in some lighter white and brown colours whilst the paint is still wet. I finish off this first layer by adding some bright white to the area under his chin. Ok, so now with all that dry, it's time to add some pink to those ears. For convenience, I used a ready mixed flesh colour, but dulled it down a bit by adding in some brown, so it was more natural. I also painted a second coat of white to the brightest parts of the fur here. And now for the eyes, my favourite part of any animal painting. I've reverted back to my rigger brush for this as it tends to hold its point and enough paint for getting in those smooth fine details. With the few acrylic paintings I've done on canvas, like I've said I have found it hard to get in the smaller details as the paint is quite thick compared to what I'm used to with my watercolours and it tends to drag on the canvas even with the addition of water or flow improver but so far I have found the smoother wood surface a bit easier. But maybe it's just me, and each acrylic painting I do, regardless of the surface I use, is practice. And with practice comes progress. Let me know in the comments box if you've painted on wood or canvas before, and which brushes you use for details. I paint the second eye just like the first, starting with the black of the pupil and then adding brown for the iris. I use white for the highlights but will glaze over some of these with maybe some blue paint once it's dry. It's back to the pink paint now for the area around the koala's eyes. And some lighter grey too. Mm -hmm. 
Now for that characteristic koala nose, which on the face of it appears black, but after checking back with my reference photo, is actually a wide variety of different colours, especially where the light is hitting it. I started off with black around the top part where the nose meets the fur, and then added a mixture of dark grey and dark blue, and blended them together to avoid stop and start points. I then added in some dark brown, and blended that in too. At the bottom half of the nose I added in some of the pinks I'd mixed up for the ears, and mixed in a bit of brown at the edges. And did the same for the mouth. When this layer was dry I repeated the same process, only this time I decided to add a lighter blue to make the highlight area stand out more. And then added a purple glaze over the top. Ok, so now for the second fur layer. For this I decided to use an old bristly brush and try stippling. I used the brush dry and lightly tapped the paint onto the panel. In the darker areas I layered over lighter greys, and on the lighter areas I added darker greys to try and imitate the salt and pepper look I mentioned earlier. I quite liked the effect this gave so carried on down the koala's arm in the same way, adding in some black as well where the fur got darker. At the lower part of the arm where there was more separation of the fur into clumps, I also worked in some white, all the while keeping my eye on the reference photo. Here I was still using my brush dry, but started to use less stippling and be more intentional with my brush strokes, using a short flicky motion in the direction of fur growth. Where the arm meets the leg, I also added in some of the blue I'd used in the koala's nose, as I thought it would help to add a bit of harmony and interest to the shadow area. Now with the fur starting to take shape, I began to build in some contrast by adding darker greys and still using the same dry brush technique. When it came to the arm on the other side, which was largely out of focus in my reference photo, I decided to first lighten up the grey by the very white highlighted area of fur, and blend in a bit more colour here as well, before adding any sort of detail. I mixed in some brown, and some purple to my grey here as well, and then when I was happier with the colour, could start to loosely mark in some of the fur clumps on this side too. I also went back to stippling again, just as a way of adding a bit more texture and variety to the fur without too much detail. When that area had dried though, I still thought the grey was too dark here, so I added another layer of lighter grey, and blended it by adding another coat of white paint next to it. I do feel like I'm finally starting to get the hang of blending acrylics now. You need to have enough paint down to blend with, and you need to make sure that the colours you want to blend are still wet. This may sound obvious, but it's all about getting the right balance, and practising till you get the hang of it. I added a bit more white paint to that arm too, and lightly brushed over it with a soft brush to blur it out. I was happier with the softer look on that side now, but in contrast, and for the arm in the foreground here, wanted to define the fur a bit more. I did this using a new brush that I've not tried until today, and that's this rake brush. 
This has more separated bristles and it's meant to be really good for painting fur, feathers and that kind of thing, so I thought I'd give it a go. Again, I think it's one of those things that you need to practice with, but so far so good. Let me know in the comments if you've ever tried one of these and what you think of it. So now all I need to do to this painting is a few last finishing touches, and of course give this little koala some whiskers. It's back to the rig brush and some thinned out white and black paint. I'm really pleased with how this piece turned out and enjoyed experimenting with painting on wood for a change. I will also be applying a protective coat of varnish, as this original paint is now available to buy in my Etsy shop, with 50% of the proceeds going to charity. So if you'd like to give this cute koala a home, then please check out the description box below. So I hope you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up if you did, comment your thoughts below and consider subscribing if you're new to my channel. Thank you all so much for watching, take care, have a great week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.